Okay, one of the questions is asked to me, how do you become a manager here? A um, little story on me. I've been here 13 and a half years. I did two years in used cars, and then I banged on the door to get in the finance, and uh, one of that is to make sure you're a top producer. So I did that for the first two years and, and did finance for a year. Then they came and got me out of there and told me they wanted me to be the used car manager, and so I've been doing that for the last 11 and a half years. Um, what they're looking for in management is people that treat their customers properly and it's pretty simple in my opinion call your customers back when you tell them um, if you're not ready for the customer yet maybe you got your file in finance and it's supposed to be done at one is what you told your customer and it's still not done still call them uh, you got to remember you are a customer too when you go to buy stuff so treat them how you want to be treated so if you don't know anything at one o'clock, it's still better to call them and say, hey, it's still in finance, it's gonna take a little longer, but I promised you I'd call you at one o'clock. Uh, this place is all about customer satisfaction and getting surveys. The surveys is how good you did as a salesperson, and customers will treat you right by giving you a good survey as long as you treat them how, how you wanna be treated. So call them back, follow up with the customers, and it's a pretty simple process. There's a lot of people that would like to get promoted and they fail at those simple things. A lot of people are trying to figure out how to be successful here as salespeople and it still comes to back to being organized. What's really neat at Dave Smith's, we have a nice program called Lead Rocket that when you're supposed to call a customer back at two o'clock, you can click on that and it'll send you up a message telling you when to call them. Uh, we get salespeople here that want to use their own systems and they think they're better at that. and. Uh, it, you can see that if they follow what we're trying to, we're not trying to make them work harder, we're trying to make them work smarter. Um, and you've got a lot of different processes. If you've got a file in finance, if you've got something over at accessories, then we've got some reminders with the program that makes your life a lot easier if you use it. Um, the next thing is, is this calling your customers back. When you promise you'll call them at a certain time, do it, it's important. If you have a problem and stuff like accessories is taking a little longer, people are afraid to call them up and say, hey, it might take another day to get your tube steps on the rig. It's a lot easier to call them than to, when they get here and explain to them, well, now it's gonna take four more hours. They wanna be out here yesterday. So don't be afraid to call the customer when you have a problem because you're the one that's built a rapport with them, not finance, not accessories. You're the one that's walking them through the process to get it right for them. And they trust you if you are honest back with them. So, One of my favorite stories about Greer Hempfield, he used to be in sales and now he's one of our tent specialists. And uh, to get a, he wanted to buy a used vehicle here and part of the process is you gotta bring it up to either Eric Smith or Sean Kendrick and have them look at it and then they'll put a price on it for him. So he brought this car up to the dealership and he had the stray dog with him that he had in the back of the car. So he leaves it sitting out front of the dealership, comes in and talks to Sean. By the time he made it back to the car, the dog had chewed the entire inside of the car up. And he was just flabbergasted. So then he was mad at the stray dog, so he, he dropped it off out in Cataldo, which is about 10 miles from his house. He says, I'm done with it, which he probably should have did. But two days later, the dog shows back up at his house out at Rose Lake this happier than a lark that he made it home and Greer's <laughs> like, I got this dog that chewed my car up, so it was fun to hear. A lot of people want to know if they should make this a career. Um, most of us never thought of getting in car sales as our profession. I went to school to be a teacher uh, and went into law enforcement right after that, so I picked the two lowest professions in Idaho as a teacher and a law enforcement. Uh, I came down here um, looking for a job, didn't know anything about cars, and what I liked about here is anybody can learn down here as long as you're organized, and so Ken gave me an opportunity. Back in 97, I worked here for about eight months, decided to go back in law enforcement, so I did it for another three and a half years, but he told me if I ever wanted to come back, I could. So I came back in 2002, and um, it's been a great place for me. We put in long hours, but any place that you want to make money, you got to put in long hours. Uh, what's nice about this is you're not out pushing a shovel, you're inside a nice air conditioned building and they give you the tools. Ken has, will give you every opportunity to succeed here. We got great advertising and so um, I've been here 
like I said, for a long time. I got another 19 years to work and I will retire here. This has been great for my family and great for me. So.